Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. Guys, in true fashion, we just set up a meeting and there was too much gold in the meeting. And you know, all the time, AJ, I, I say to myself, man, I wish that was recorded. We're, we're going to do that today. So thank you, Dennis, so much. This is AJ Nickerson. How are you doing, sir? AJ Donaldson. Donaldson, my fault. I got close hey, enough. <laughs> you're good, bro. Hey, it has a sun in it, so you already know I'm here. So, <laughs> Dude, hey, they call me AJ when I was growing up, so we'll just call each other AJ and call Let's it a day. Last that. names oh, are not yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah. Bro, absolutely. Yeah, AJ in the mix. That's trouble. So we were, we, Dave, we were talking about so much. Give everybody a little bit of the your backstory, and then we'll kind of see where it goes from there. Hundred percent. So AJ Donaldson, I'm the founder. Donaldson. And <laughs> founder and executive director of the Epic Foundation. Epic is an acronym that stands for Experience Professionals Impacting Communities. And as I wear my shirt, very proud because it just made its grand debut. We got these new shirts just done. I mean, the acronym in itself kind of shares with me what it is we do. Um, our organization has been established in 2014. We've been providing scholarships, number one, for over seven years. We have impacted, we've had the pleasure of impacting over 250 kids throughout South Florida. That impact has come in a series of ways, one, financial aid, scholarships, tutoring, and it has organically evolved into independent mentorship programs. Uh, we've even paid for a child to go through his entire vocation and trade, and now we've adopted career pathways, which has been very, very profound movement down here in South Florida. This whole conversation, I'm going to run against the grain because I'm I'm trying to prove a bigger point, right? And you'll see where I'm going with this. Let's go. We have become a society of Instagram bling bling BS, right? Mm -hmm. And what you what people aren't paying attention to is there is a crisis in America for trade jobs. Hundred percent. We're talking about electricians and plumbers getting paid real money, like real good money. Yeah. And nobody wants to do the work anymore. Right. Right. Yep. And, and so what, what is your kind of your battle cry when it comes to something like this? And, and people understand these are good jobs with good pay. Yeah. Yeah. So first and foremost, because my background, even though I'm an engineer from University of Miami, I really dug deep into education. Right. And I will tell you, it's not education. It's schooling. Education did not start, nor should it end with school, but it's been over romanticized. We dump our kids at school for the eight to 10 hours a day so I can go work a job and hopefully they turn out okay. And it's not the truth. At the end of the day, we started reading, we started talking before we even got onto a school campus. So with that said, school has its place, but it's not the end all the be all. And the only thing that school is going to promote is college advancement and university. Why? Because that's how they get their funding. Mm -hmm. So they put their efforts where their money is. That doesn't tell you it's the only viable option. As you talk about with Bling Bling, I got friends of mine who went to university, who went to college, who became an engineer just like I did, and ended up doing something completely different. Went into construction, his family business, and he lives on acres and makes millions of dollars not doing what he studied in college. So it's not the end of the be all. It has a purpose and it should be used as such just for a specific purpose so I can move on to my success. So what's the answer then? Because I, because you know I'm going to have kids in the next couple of years, and let me tell you something: they Dude. sure as fuck ain't going to public school. That's for <laughs> damn sure. Because what we've been talking about, my entrepreneurship friends that own yeah. businesses, we were thinking about making our own school. So that's our seven. Well, that's more of our. It was our ten year goal. Now it's our seven year goal. Well, it's going to be your five year goal because you just met me. So Dude, I was just going to tell you that we actually connect. Dude, we got a meeting on the twenty fourth. I got to plug you in. A university is wanting to partner with, with us right now to build a campus in the next three years. Let's go. <laughs> so it's been profound. So my solution to everything is mentorship. Okay. Mentorship. Talk on it. Talk on At it. At the end of the day, if I can see a reflection of myself 
and someone who's seen success and it's paid for to me, oh. one, I can be just as successful, if not more successful, because I can avoid the pitfalls that, that person actually had to go through and sacrifice to get me to where I am. Can I speak Frank here? I'm going to, because I like to dip my toe in waters that other people won't. So every time, because a lot of my friends are uh, Hispanic, uh, I spent 20 years in hospitality. So I literally worked side by side with these with these amazing human beings. And, yeah. and I have African-American friends. And every time I interview them on the podcast, I say, you should start a real estate fund. And they go, why? <laughs> and I go, because there's 90 billion efforts that look like me. But there's not a lot that look like you that are doing that, right? right? And what I mean by that is I have a friend who's 24 years old. He owns 800 units. And when I met him, he had 100 units. And I, I said, what are you doing? Wow. He said, I'm buying apartments. I said, no, you're not. He goes, what are you talking about? Mm. I said, you're showing every Hispanic that they don't have to be the tiler, the sheet right. rocker. They get to be the owner. Yeah. And so by you creating something that people can connect to, Right. Then they're easy to join the movement or they're easy right. to put their money into it yeah. and so on and so on. Right. Yeah, dude. And that's from top to bottom why I had to organize this business, this, this entire brand a certain way, because for me, it was just me paying it forward. When I first started, I would go be a commencement speaker at a graduation. Hey, I'm making good money. I come from the hood. I'm, I'm speaking in the hood. I'm like, yo, hey, here's 10 grand. Right. Go to college, go to university. And as I started to evolve my thinking, I was like, well, no. Go to this trade school in this vocation. And I got these kids who are coming out because technically, even though I went to the University of Miami on a scholarship, yet the scholarship ended in five years of a degree that they didn't tell me was going to be a five-year degree and have caused me to walk away with $60,000 worth of debt to start my career. I dug a hole for myself because I didn't know what I didn't know. So mentoring is profound for me because if I can get these connections made, we are paying forward our experiences because everything you're talking about right now I, I coming from where I come from, I'm not exposed to that. I don't know that that exists. How would I even start that fund? What are you talking about? Point me in the right direction. Oh, well, everything is Googleable. Well, if I hit that once and make one search, there's a billion different search you know, results. And I don't know which one is the right one. So I'm drinking water from a freaking fire hose. Where the hell do I go from here? Well, guess what? You just found them. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> not, even, not even if you choose to, I'm in this baby. Let's do it. Like, because I'm going to have kids in, in the near future and every one of my business partners, this is all we talk about. I right. have young kids. How do we support? Right. Dude, let yeah. me say something. Smart as shit. Yeah. But nothing yeah. about learning about 18th century civil war means right. sh jack shit to me. <laughs> but let's talk about how we structure a company. Let's right. talk about how we make money. I didn't even know money until I worked private equity. Right. And then you realize like, oh, that's how money works. Right. And yeah. so it's these things that we don't talk about in society that are holding us back. Right. And so it, it's on us. Here's the thing. It's not even a choice. Yeah. You, yeah. you and I, the, the reason we're so fired up about this is because we know that we don't have a choice. Right. Right. Because if we don't wake up every morning and do this, then we won't be us. Yeah. And it's so funny because I mean, when, when it comes to that choice, and our freedoms, and we're talking about the country we live in, and people, obviously, depending on the, the, the circle you're dialoguing in, it's like, well, it's a capitalist society. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's frowned upon. It was like, but we, this is literally what it is. Like, this is, no one's trying to fool you into thinking it's anything else. Like, it starts and ends in capitalism. Why are we arguing about this? So it's we like, if I come out of college in debt, I've got to pay that debt, or I'm on the street. Hey, so guess what? You got to be mindful of and aware of it. These are these things, financial literacy, like you're saying, that's something that we did. That's why I was jumping for joy because like that's literally something we did during covid for all our students on zoom we connected them with a, a bunch of speakers and we got them exposed to hey why don't you stop paying 505 freaking dollars for a freaking ps5 times two because you want to play video games all day why don't you invest one of those 500 dollars into this mutual fund and into this stock and is they and their minds are blown like oh i would never thought that because in the house that they live in their parents didn't know that they didn't know Mm -hmm. And I think I think ultimately at the end of the day, it's it's one of those things where um and 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 just to kind of give you a little background, I introduce you to somebody when uh last year when the riots were, yeah. were happening, and I thought to myself, like, how how do I support how do I do this? Okay, well, the 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 adults are already gone. So then I go to the kids, right? And so I had a real conversation with my African American friend, a real, like, like scary for me conversation, yeah. right? Yeah. And when we got off, when we got done. 
And she said, Austin, I come from inner city Philly. I want you to understand that they don't even know what a mortgage, they don't know how a mortgage works. They don't know what a credit card is. I go, what? Yeah. what yeah. So so here's here's my thought. It's not that they don't want to know. It's that they don't even know the options are available. Correct. Yep. Yep. So, and so we have read. Because if you're talking about that GDP, dude, which I know this is your language, when you're talking about that GDP, that's not being pumped in our areas, mm-hmm. right? That is not going to sustain. That is not going to build the bottom line. So it's like that's not what's being generated in our areas to say, hey, this is something you need to know. This is something viable. This is not being paid forward. And then it becomes generational. It's been generational. And then you can go even farther. Let's talk about uh, health and wellness and the food. Oh. Food yeah. deserts. You yeah. know, I didn't even know what food deserts were until yeah. I hear that the bad restaurants are in poverty stricken neighborhoods and they don't yeah. have healthy options. Yeah. What, what is going on right yeah. now? And then you start like, okay, so here's a choice. I don't have everybody's like, everybody's like, you know what they want to do? <laughs> this is my favorite thing. They want to die on their sword of their pride and shit of, of being I'm an artist, right? No, no, no. You know how you affect change? You create commerce. And you and you create jobs so you can have a crap load of money to yeah. give back or your time or, or yeah, you know right. like yep. that's how you do it. You don't right. do it the other way by bitching and moaning because what we talk about all the time in my circle is that the true crutch of America is not drugs and alcohol, is not porn, is not poverty. It's one thing: victimhood. Yes, victimization, one hundred percent. I literally did, again watch Dennis's podcast. <laughs> oh, I swear, because I was like, just own your shit. Like you got to own it. Like, okay, I messed up. This is my problem. Okay, yeah, this happened to me in the past. I'm grown now. Like, I can't continue to look in the past. I got to move on to the future. I have my baggage, and I'm up running and, and taking out crap along the way, dude, because that's what this is. Epic is, is that therapeutic thing for me, because football was that. I dumped a lot of my hostility and anger on the field. I was a gentle giant anywhere else. I put that helmet on. I was a madman because I had a lot of stuff that I was dealing with, and thank God I had that conduit to dump that in. And that's for a lot of guys. A lot mm-hmm. of men from where I grew up in, it's not just, oh, hey, this is the only way I can make it. It's like, if I don't put this somewhere, I'm going to end up in jail. No, and, and let me tell you something. When they say Ray Lewis was a bad man, he was oh, a bad yeah. he was a bad man because oh, yeah. he had to get that anger and that frustration out. And if you were on the backside of that thing, you better watch out. Like, Ooh, this, buddy. This, it's not a joke. Like, this yeah. is serious, guys. We yeah. have people, right? It, it, one of the things that I realized that the kind of straightened me out. And I had a mentor tell me, if you can walk around and realize that everybody's hurting from something, then you can have compassion in your heart and you're not attached to how they're reacting towards you. Right. right? It's this victimhood attachment thing that we're, well, I know, but Bob yelled at me for here. Well, maybe Bob had a shitty day. Like, (laughs) you know, like, like, like it's not about you. And and, and I think we're walking around on eggshells and we're, we're waiting Here's what I'm here's what my friends and, and you, I could tell you and other people are gonna do. We're not waiting around for you to help us out. We're gonna go be the change that everybody's seeking. <laughs> Dude, again, watch the podcast because I said we talked about that, bro. It's like like either step up or step out. You're like, like just get out of the way because we have a lot of people who are about action, you know, the mentorship aspect. You know, you hear mentoring, you hear pay it forward. And I told Dennis, it was like the word pay in itself is is synonymous for monetary and this generation. Even if they don't know what they want because there's that deficiency of how much they know, but they know what they don't want. They don't want a bunch of old men, old dudes, old people talking at me, telling me what I'm doing right and wrong and judging me, like you said, right? They don't want that. They want somebody who's going to show up. You know, there's a kid that we supported many years ago. We were on Channel 6 News, CBS. They did a segment called Mentors Matter. And I just sat back and listened to him talk. And he said, yeah, when I first met this guy, I thought like everybody else that he was just going to be all talk. That's what he said. He's like, but he actually showed up. That He was uh, so shocked by the fact that I was like, I did what I said I was going to do. Like, and it, again, But it's his character. And again, to take another step forward into the race card, some of these young black, brown, and tan faces I deal with down here in South Florida, me being a Jamaican-American coming up here, born and raised in South Florida, Opelika, but by way of Jamaica, I had a different spin because when I looked at – Black History Month, when I looked at Dr. King coming in, when you look at his speeches, we're so victimized. We're so adamant about racism and how we were victimized. And that's on the list. And I'm like, well, hold on, guys. Yes, that was bad. That was a long time ago. And yes, there is some existence of that today. But let's listen really carefully to what Dr. King said. He said, you dreamt of the day that we would no longer be judged by the color of our skin, right? Mm -hmm. The man was brilliant. He could have stopped there. He could have literally put a period there ended it and he would have been justified don't judge people just by the color of skin cool he did not 
He took a comma and he put a big old butt. What did your mom and dad tell you about saying butt? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. What was more important? What came after the butt? What came after the butt was being judged by the content of our character. So I don't care, brother to brother, white guy to white guy, Spanish. It doesn't matter. It's like, do you have good character? Can yeah. I fuck what you're saying? You know, she said, she said my, my friend Mel said something to me. And I was making a comment about something, you know, African-American did. And she goes, yeah, guess what? There's dumbass fucking African-Americans. She goes, just like there's dumbass white motherfuckers. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, hey, I can, get behind, I can get behind that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because, because at the end of the day, what you and I are seeking is solutions and what everybody else is seeking is problems. Right, right. And, and I had enough problems in my 20 years of alcoholism that I'm not seeking that anymore. Right. What's the narrative for the conversation that we are moving the needle forward? Yeah. And that's where I'm going to, and your, your bad attitude of this is how it's always going to be. Doesn't yeah. do anything for me. And I refuse to be around it. Right. A hundred percent. That's what we separate ourselves. I mean, you know how many times I've been in situations where, you know, mom, a single mom who's doing her best and we're trying to support her. We come in, we surprise them. Here's a check. Boom, boom, boom. And then here's the application. So of course, there's a scholarship application people have to fill in. And there happened to be a media release form. And on this media release form says HIPAA and FERPA and all these important things that, hey, we, you know, we just want to make sure legally that if I'm going to take your an image of your child that, you know, you're giving us permission to do so. My baby, you're taking my baby from me. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, didn't, just don't sign it. How about that? We don't need to take pictures of them. We're still going to support you. Is that okay? And, and they're, bl- they're just completely, but this is a trauma. This is the trauma that human uh. beings have undergone that you can't even seek, you can't even receive, I should say, the help that's right in front of you because you've been traumatized. Oh, man. I have a, I have a good coach that coaches me that says we as people live our life with our life story right up against our nose. Yes. Yeah. And he says, cause you can't see around you. He said, if you breathe for two seconds and pull it out, he said, then you can operate in the space where, where, where you're not taking offense to everything and you're not doing anything. And so I know what mentorship did for me. Yeah. What, what are the aspects of your, your, your company, your nonprofit that, that you find the most rewarding uh, when you see the light bulb uh, come on? So dude, I can, I can answer that question in two parts. Uh, starting with the fact that I, the only reason I am the man I am today. And the only reason, again, building men that I was able to be in this position um, as the executive director, as a founder, as a business owner, as a homeowner, as a married man, as a father, all these things, all these hats that I wear was because I received mentoring myself. Now, here's the thing. I sought mentoring, uh, right? I wasn't given mentoring, right? I grew up in a religious home. And so there was church and pastors and all that kind of stuff. But it, I couldn't quite get down with the way things kind of came off as legalistic, judgmental. It didn't, it didn't resonate with me. I thought a lot of it was very practical and you could apply it, right? Like the wealth principle of giving back 10%. Didn't say I had to necessarily give it to you. They said, just give it back. Rich that poor dad. That's a wealth principle when I saw those analogies. Now, I sought mentoring and I always kind of spin it like Batman, right? Batman versus Superman. Batman kicked his ass. Favorite comic hero. Why? Right here, right? He had the truth of purpose. He had that motivation that he could take his humanity and run with it. And he was a engineer. He was a chemist. He was a badass jujitsu warrior. He had all these different layers to this man as one individual human being with no superpowers, right? To me, that was like, that's what I wanted to be. I was like, dude, I've got a multifaceted, my mom raised me this way, but there are things I understood and recognized early that I was missing, right? I wasn't brave. I wasn't bold. I wasn't articulate. I wasn't willing to step outside the box. So guess what? I saw a man who was brave, who was bold, who was articulate. I'm like, you. You're going to mentor me. Who the hell are you? Shut up. You're going to mentor me and I'm going to show up at your door every single day until you mentor me. And I took everything I could. And one of the most profound things, there was two major quotes, but there was one quote that came up during Dennis's podcast. People don't know what you, the people don't care what you know until they know you care. Mm. People don't care what you know until they know you care. And that for me was why we had to show up first and invest in these kids' lives because they hadn't seen that from their own trauma. People did not show up for them. So they, that's low income, impoverished, underprivileged, underreported, all this terminology. People did not show up on their behalf when they were innocent. Mm-hmm. 
when they were still the innocents, right? So they're traumatized going into their adulthood and their adolescence and all these different things. So for me, that was important that we show that we care just for you as a human being. Nothing else. You ain't got to do nothing for me, bro. Here. What? Just here. There you go. Secondly, when it comes to the impact that is made when that happens, when that aha moment, when you're able to really dig in and help that child see the superhero that exists in themselves, dude, that's everything. That's changing the world. That's changing our society. I call it the ripple effect of impact. Yes. I'm yes. coaching you directly, but because you're a better person, you're affecting other people in your life and yes. it just keeps on going. I'm going to say something to you that I wrote two days ago that I think is really going to hit uh, home with you. Yeah. So um, I, I get up early, um, uh, really early, and I always work out every day and, and, and I do my thing and I'm very consistent with who I am. And that's what a lot of people comment me on. But I always get this question. They ask me, what time do you go to bed? Okay. For me, that's the wrong question. The question that you should be asking is what drives you so deep in your soul that you can show up like that every day for yourself and for your clients? Right. Because what you're doing is you're asking the fisherman how the fish tastes instead of asking the fisherman how he caught so much fish. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I agree a hundred thousand percent. And so what, what you're describing with the with these kids is is all they're asking for is the opportunity for somebody to give a fuck. Right. I mean, it's as simple as that. And so when I meet somebody for 2.5 seconds and I've already related to them and we're best friends, they feel safe enough to share with me yeah. something, right? And then that evokes change with them because they say, well, oh, well, hold on, maybe, maybe somebody gives a shit. Right? Yeah. Maybe so, because. We have an absentee of men, right? We haven't, we have an absentee of, of, of people doing what they said they were going to do. Right. And then sticking to it. Right. Because one of the things when I wanted to start getting sober, I realized that it wasn't the promises that people broke to me. It was the promises that I broke to myself that eroded my inner confidence. And so I made it a point that if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And I attack that with like, an aggressive kind of <laughs> awkward kind of thing where yeah. when I do it, I do it. And, and yeah. it's really served me well in the last yeah. two years and eight months. It's changed my whole life. Dude, and it's tapping into your passion. And I think being able to help those kids find that passion allows them to truly be successful, not just monetarily, but they can have that tenacity. They can have that stick with itness. They can have that because they've triggered a passion in them and that's what it was for me. And I'm mean, alluding back to what you were saying before. I was, I, I remember being that kid. I haven't forgotten that. I call it my Robin, um, the, the, the Peter pandemic is the way I call it. Right. And this was even before, and this is even before the pandemic, the Peter pandemic for me is like, do you remember the lost boys? Do you remember the pirates? Right. And if you watch the movie hook with Robin Williams, got rest his soul, mm -hmm. Robin Williams became an adult who forgot what it was to be a kid. So he forgot how to fly. He forgot how to imagine. He, he didn't have quite an imagination. He was too about making money. He was too about, you know, furthering the business. But he forgot what it was, the passion of even going into the direction of why he was there in the first place. As soon as he realized his reason, his why, he was flying it, even as an adult. Who are all the pirates? The pirates who have just completely given up on mm -hmm. imagination. In fact, they are now hating and trying to kill those who have the imagination, trying to stifle, right, what they have going on. That, unfortunately, in many industries are the people who are running these industries, including the education industry. I'm going to, I don't know if I've ever talked about this. In, in, in this type of aggression is very hard to describe, even when it hits me, when they're coming at me, but, the, but I think it'll hit, it'll hit a space with you. When you get sober and there's a man that has an alcohol addiction and he sees you happy and sober, the aggressiveness wow. and anger he has towards you because he can't get sober himself wow. is one of the most awkward situations wow. in your life. Like almost like kind of scared for yourself because right. he's so upset with himself. That's what you're describing wow. in the parents is we have as adults, we have stricken all the fun out of life. 
everything is a thing, right? Right. And we don't celebrate shit anymore. It's on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to this thing. Right. And at the end of the day, we have an obligation to bring that back in our life. Because to be honest with you, I don't give a fuck what's going on out there. Life's pretty fucking great. Man. Right. Like me and you are having this conversation. I'm in yeah. California. You're in Miami. I work with a guy in Spain every day. Awesome. Like, you know, like it, life is awesome. We got to get people in their gifts, right? right? In their in their gifts, doing what they love and that love that they'll share to other people. And that'll be kind of the change that we're looking for. That's a fulfillment. Like you get that fulfillment that wakes you up every day and motivates you to keep moving. Because even when the life in the day isn't that great, you can keep, you're still motivated because you find that fulfillment in it. And it's such a profound thing versus, hey, we got to sort kids to now get into this industry because we need to pick, we need to push the bottom line, the GDP. That's all that matters, right? Keep this country alive and, you know, all this stuff. It's like, yeah, but you'd be more successful if you sorted these kids so that you found that child who happened to be really passionate about that thing, right? I assure you, there are kids in this world with all the diversity that we have, there are kids in this country that would be extremely passionate about sanitation. Extremely, that they would be the best sanitation workers ever. But no, you allow it to be a default that if you don't make it, if nothing else works out, you can default. So now you got guys that are riding that truck who are cleaning things miserable and doing it with a miserable attitude. So nothing's done with the type of passion and fulfillment that if somebody actually cared about that particular thing. No, oh, and Steve Harvey talks about this all the time. You know, he, he, that the comments, he says, I got, you know, I got a motherfucker that when we were 16, he loved to cut grass. That dude's making $4 million. And that's all he did his whole life. And like, you know, what's interesting when the pandemic was going on and we were in California and we went to a local barbershop and it was all a bunch of Hispanic kids and this young kid, he had been training for like two months to cut his first hair. I think I was like, this is fourth, right? Dude took forever, right? <laughs> but it was, it was the best haircut I've ever got. And in that wow. moment, I thought to myself, this is how we fix America. Yes. By somebody doing what they love, supporting small businesses. Because let me tell you something right now. I will not, I don't give a fuck how much I got going on. I will not walk off this earth until I've supported as many human beings as possible, living their gifts that they were born to do, regardless of what that is. Like regardless of it, that's like milk and goats in New Zealand. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me, but we as a society have to give them the freedom to be able to do it in the first place. That's the difference. Look at the education system as a great example. Of course, is one of my passions is what I do because of how it affects our society and the next generation, our students, that's where they are. The truancy, truant law says you got to be there or I'm coming and knocking on your door to cop. So our country has said it's absolutely necessary your kids go to school. Again, not receive an education, that's different. We have a different knowledge around that. But you have to go to school, your kids have to be there and it serves its purpose. I got you. But let's think about the workers, not the administrators, the workers, the teachers, right? Especially down here in South Florida. You have some amazing, passionately driven educators that exist here's a problem a lot of them are no longer in a classroom a lot of them have had to abandon their passion have had to abandon that ship because of how the model of the school system does not support them which is exactly why i thought it was critical to push a mentoring movement because you have people who have their god-ordained gift to disseminate information to just empower and ignite a passion in the next generation in a subject or a field who is not in front of these kids day to day, quite the opposite, right? And they're in every other industry except the one they're supposed to be in because they don't get supported the way they should be supported, right? So it's important because for me, I have to find a way to help those people to still work within their passion. You don't necessarily have to be a teacher. Right. If you have that gift, if you have that calling, if you have that skill set. Right. You can still help educate the next generation by becoming a mentor or more specifically, an academic mentor, as I coined that phrase. Work with them. In academic. You don't have to necessarily be at school, which is where that 10 year plan, that model school I talked about. That's now based on passion and based on everything going on, the stars line and all the right people are getting in place. It seems like it's like a three to five year plan. 
at the end of the day, our model school is going to be primarily based around mentorship. We will have instructors that are professionals that worked specifically in that field. If I have a math teacher, this is not a math teacher who just happened to uh, pass a math certification by the skin of their teeth. This is a math teacher who's working in the field of engineering or some math applied. So when a kid says, oh, I have to learn this. How am I going to use this in life? You can actually answer that question. Dude, I couldn't. I couldn't be right now. I want to run through the screen. I couldn't be any more. <laughs> I couldn't be any more charged up because I don't even know what the fuck is going on. Sign me up. I'm in. You got me. You got my money. You got my team. Because what I want to do, what I want to do is dead serious. Is I want to create an internship program and let them come to work with us and see how a freaking business works, dude. Because I'm telling you, dude. These kids, man, dude, I've met some kids these days, 17 and 18. I'm like, dude, they're so smart. They're yeah. like, perfect example. My mentors are in a group called Go Abundance. By the way, when I introduce you to them, 275 millionaires, all entrepreneurs and real estate investors, 90% of their kids go to homeschooling or special thing, right? Yeah. These 16 and 13 year olds already have businesses. They already have businesses. And they traveled the world and they've done all this. So they wrote a book, check it out. Uh, his name is Aaron Musa Stegi. Uh, they wrote a book called five hour school week. And his wife quit her job to be a teacher. They have four kids. It is amazing what these kids are doing. And if I get these, so that a lot of these guys started the Acton school. So they're behind the Acton school, which is wow. entrepreneurship driven. And so we have to change, right? Uh, I got an interview I'll send you. Wow. Uh, Seth Godin and Aubrey Marcus was talking about how the education system has not changed since 1880, and we haven't fixed it at all. Oh, and there's a reason. Don't let them cut us off right now. There's a reason for it. Let's be real. There's a reason it hasn't changed, but we won't. We, I won't stop that. I may get a sniper. Take me out, right? You have this recorded. So they take yeah. me out. You know who done it. We we'll talk about it on another time, <laughs> but we have an opportunity, right? With everything that's going on with technology, with, yeah. with, with everything available, like I am predicate myself on a lifestyle investor. Right. And so the thing is, is my goal is I'm going to run multiple companies. I'm going to have a coaching business, two podcasts, and I'm going to work three days a week. Now those things might be 16 hour days, but it don't matter. Exactly. Right. Because I made a choice, right? Because this work-life balance is shit that they're talking about. It doesn't exist. What you're looking for is work-life control. Yes. Yes. And so, and so if you teach people, right. And I got to send you this interview. He's talking about how the giga industry, the uh, freelance industry is growing by 200%. You know, I'm a great website developer, right? Look, perfect example. There's a guy I know. He builds websites for short-term rental companies, right? He's built 500 in the last two years. He's from London. He lives in Bali, right? And does this. He pays $4,000 for the year for a three bedroom, two bath house with a pool and a maid. What? It costs 2000 bucks for a website. <laughs> so what I'm saying is as we decentralize money, yeah. uh, real estate and technology, you're going to open up the world to be able to operate your business from anywhere that you want. And you can be more of a freelancer right? And you can create something that's niche for you, right? Niche down and, and then really allow you to just do what you want to do. And that's what we're seeking, right? That's what all of my clients want. Let me tell you the motivation behind becoming an entrepreneur versus going into engineering. Because though, like you, photographic memory, you know, I use that to my advantage because I got that from music, growing up, playing the classical piano, having to memorize all that cheap music and stuff, um, utilized it in school, don't ask me who our founding presidents are. I may be able to tell you a couple of them. I got an A plus in that test though, right? So that same concept. When I came out, I hated the entire experience of engineering while I was there at UM because it didn't fit my personality whatsoever. Like imagine putting this behind a, a freaking motherboard oh, and just yeah. soldering yeah. all day long. And no one cared. It was to fit their agenda, right? We needed more black kids with 4.0s yep. who have this transcript. And it's the, all these superlatives, let's bring them over. We need them. Let's give them a scholarship and then put them in debt. <laughs> so I come out and I said, this was a terrible experience. I want to make sure the next generation doesn't do that. How? I talked to my mentor who happens to be a bishop, but he's a businessman. He actually went to school, Georgia Tech, you know, master's business, the whole night, MBA, the whole night. So he's like, dude, well, well, his question to me was like, what would give you the lifestyle you want? Mm. I was like, damn. 
And I, I had a list. I had a list of like a dozen things. Like I could be, you know, an audio engineer, electrical engineer, I could be a musician. I can do all these things. He's like, what will give you the life that you want? I was like, well, the life that I wanted is to one day have kids, get married, have kids, and be a father who's available. Mm. That's what I got to. I was like, I just want to be available. You see where I'm at right now? I'm in my home office. My son's in there doing his work right now. I'm about to go hang out with him, watch Justice League after, go outside throw the football, if it's raining from it. I'm available. I am successful by all rights based on the success I was looking for. Mm. Right? And so that's where two, three years ago, I had a huge contract with this Native American tribe for over a, over a decade. We we're making a half million dollars just off that contract alone, right? I get to the table and they were like, look, man, we want more. And we don't want to pay more, but we want more. What do you want? I want you to go here. You got to do this. And they have no control over anything that they're doing. And I was like, no. When they gave me an all or nothing ultimatum, I was like, well, you could take this contract and shove it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why? Because one, I wasn't fulfilling my true purpose. I was only serving their community and a community that they're already taken care of. They don't care about the white man's money. So it's like, why, what am I doing here then? When you have a 13 year old who looks at you and I say, well, son, what, you know, let's start talking about what you want to do for the rest of your life. What do you want to be or grow up? And his response is, I already am what I need to be. I'm ex native American. It's like at 13, you're telling me this. He already knows. He's like, yeah, I'm good, bro. When I turn 18, I get this much money. When I turn 21, I start popping out kids and I have more kids and I get more money. That's it. Good. Bye. How you motivate him to get an A in a class, right? So I was like, dude, this is not, I proved the model, but this is not what I wanted to do. I walked away. I told my wife, I'm like, hey, we're going to have to buckle down the hatches for a little while and tighten our belts, but I, I can't do this anymore. I got to move on. And the number one reason was because I wouldn't have been available. Mm. They were going to fly me all the way through the United States. I wouldn't have been available to see and help raise my kids. And I was like, no, it's not worth it. No matter how much money you put in front of me, it's not worth it. I need to be here. I need them to see me the same way I wish I had someone to see. So uh, last year I got I got laid off seven days into uh, COVID. Mm. And then uh, I got divorced two weeks later. And uh, I called um, this guy that I really respect because I had the opportunity to go back to a job uh, yeah. that I really didn't want. And he said this. He said, Austin, if you bet on yourself, I promise you won't be disappointed. Wow. He goes, it might not be easy and it's going to fucking suck. (laughs) He goes, but I promise you that you'll get to where you need to go. Wow. He goes, I'll never regret that. And I think more people need to bet on themselves. And, and, and yeah, it's scary. And, And yeah, you don't know sometimes where the next check is coming from, but you get this. It's for you. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Nobody can take that away from you. Let me tell you a few, a couple stories. One about the same situation. I COVID, right. Everybody knows last year and a half plus, you know, um, during COVID I didn't have the job, right. Cause I had just left and walked away from that situation a year prior. And I was still trying to figure things out. And I get a call from this guy who was an administrator. He's a principal. He calls me, he's been trying to track me down and da da da. And I'm like, all right, dude, what do you need now? Offer me a job. Okay, what's the job? Mind you, Epic was trying to like organize itself, figure this out. I was really motivated, passionate about it. He offered me his job. He's like, dude, you know, you're going to be in six figures easily. You know, I need your specific skill set, blah, 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 for being in the system, right? So I was outside at the time because my son's inside playing the piano. And after being outside for an extended period of time and in that car, I go inside. My son looks at me and he's like, dude, what? Like, what? Like, you, you're supposed to be giving me a piano lesson. You said you were going to be quick. You come inside 20 minutes later. I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> like, it's about accountability. You said it was going to be quick. So I said, well, son, you know, somebody offered me a job. And he gave me this look of disgust. Like, how, like who they, they don't know who you are. Why would somebody offer you a job? You have a job, right? Like, in his adolescent mind, in his childhood. I said, well, son, I mean, that job is offering $150, whatever, $1,000. What? You know, he sits back in his chair and he's shocked. I said, but also, you know, dad's going to be working longer hours, so I wouldn't be available. His response, hell no, 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 you can't do it. No, you're not doing it. And from the lips of a babe, though, I'm having this conflict because I got bills to pay. I got a wife. I got all these things. What do I do? My son is like, no, you need to be here. I need to see you. Right. 
That's it. Enough said. I don't hear. I don't need to see. I don't care how much money you offer me. And then a part of this, my mom gets sick. She's in the hospital, right? The, the industry of the medical industry, another one of the top tens in, the, in this country, fails her, right? She almost dies. I'm sitting there trying to scratch my head and figure out how in the blue hell would I have been able to handle this if I was working that job? I wouldn't have been able to grab my mom, put her in a car, drive her down to these appointments, call my friends who are doctors. I wouldn't have been able to do this for this woman who sacrificed everything for me because I was working this job. Sometimes life gives you and clears the way for you to be available for something that you didn't even know you had to be there for. Right. And at the end of the day, all you, especially dads, all you people out there that are whining and bitching about trying to make more money, that's your ego talking. Right. Because let me tell you something, your family and your kids aren't asking for that. Correct. Correct. Dude, we could go for nine years. We're going to do part two soon. Uh, <laughs> not to mention that I can't wait to get one of those shirts. But uh, yes, sir. People, hey, listen. If people want to find, if people want to find out about your movement, what you're doing, yeah. how would they, how would they track that down? Well, I mean, first and foremost, you have our website, and you have our social media. That's the best thing to go to because you can share in the experience yourself. You don't have to hear from my mouth. You can actually hear from the kids themselves directly. These kids that we've been impacting, who, who've offered these testimonies to the community. So go to our website, Epic. SouthFlorida.org. That's epic, E P I C, SouthFlorida.org. Our Instagram is exactly the same as our URL. So, Epic South Florida at Epic South Florida. Facebook is a little shorter. So, it's Epic SFL for the same thing. And you can find us on uh, Twitter, Epic underscore Florida. And of course, LinkedIn as well, the Epic Foundation. Um, one thing I have to push and kind of promote and help people recognize that, you know, our biggest fundraiser every year is our annual gala. Uh, during COVID, we had to go virtual, just like most foundations and organizations. This year, me and my board said, F that. <laughs> like, we're, we're not doing it again. We're not going virtually. Screw that, dude. So what happens with us this year is, thank God for a really good friend of mine who works at Resorts World Bimini. We're going to Bimini Bahamas for our gallery event, bro. <laughs> Woo yes, sir. So October 2nd, we're going to have um, guest speakers. We have a special guest, Calvin Hughes of Channel 10 News. Uh, your boy, Dennis, you may recognize. Dennis is actually not going to be there. We're going to do an interview style right there live in front of everybody. So tune in October 2nd from 7.30 to, well, we're going to be partying until the wheels fall off. So we're going to be having a good time in Bimini, Bahamas. Um, the festivities and activities start at 8.30. So I'm really excited about what's to come. But this is really just the beginning, the momentum leading up to the event what happens at the event and everything that's going to happen after that I can already foresee relations like this that we're developing. We're connecting the right people to the right causes. And let me just say this to you specifically, dude, if you don't want to start a foundation, just adopt us, bro. Because no, we- I, do, I, I don't, cause I don't have the time. Uh, <laughs> cause you don't even want to get into my schedule. I think I have like six businesses right now, but adopt us, bro. But I already did. So, 100%. So everybody that's in my businesses or people that I respect and mentors and, and amazing. And if I can, if I can be anything for your movement and for your charity, because let me tell you something, you don't know me that well, but there's no, and I, I don't mind, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but there's nobody that knows more people than I do. <laughs> and there's nobody that sings a louder bullhorn than I do because I that's how, you. that's how I roll. And so <laughs> I'll just be, the face and, and the yeah. connector for this bad boy, because I'm, 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 I'm telling you right now, and, and I mean this a hundred percent, I probably get two people a week that'll reach out to me and go, man, I'm having kids soon. And I just don't know. I just, you know, what do I do? You know, yeah. and, 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 and it, 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 this is, this is a big deal. And if you truly want to know how we fix society and headed in the right direction is we start with the kids. Yeah. And, and we, and we support them and we, and, and you know what I would love to do, man, I would love, cause I do this for, for clients all day. We got to get you a podcast. Oh, so tune in on Thursday. Cause I'll be interviewing a young man uh, who's doing a calm 24 hours, which is just a profound, you got to see it, but they've been pushing me to do these epic lives. 
No, yeah, we got it. We're going to get you a podcast. We're going to get you all straightened out. And, and it, it, dude, I'm telling you, I can already see the movement. Um, and, and I already going to send this interview to like five different people because I, I want them to get behind it. And, um, we can, man, we could do a rich kid, poor kid summit. Like there's so many things we could do. So guys, if you like this episode, send it to a friend that'll get some value from it. And we'll see you next time. That's awesome. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.